Welcome to MTBS TV. I'm Neil Schneider. Stereoscopic 3D gaming is finally earning the attention it deserves, but what few realize is there's a very interesting, very exciting history behind 3D gaming. So we decided to put this little series together to talk about how stereoscopic 3D gaming came to be. Our story begins with a problem. In the mid-90s, there were several solutions on the market. Anagoth glasses, head-mounted displays, all kinds of stuff. The problem was to get these technologies to work, game developers were required to customize their game to work with each individual solution. That just wasn't going to happen. So to make mass gaming possible, there had to be a way to, to make these technologies compatible industry-wide. Well, there was a solution to this. And let me tell you a little bit about a company called Metabyte. Metabyte was an innovation company. They came out with all kinds of ideas. One, one, one of the big ideas was to have you know, combinations of graphics cards working on a single game, which, which was the pioneer for technologies like SLI by NVIDIA and Crossfire by, by ATI. Another one of their innovations was involved with stereoscopic 3D gaming. David Cook was the first director of, excuse me, was their first director of engineering, and their team invented what we now know as a stereoscopic 3D driver. The idea is this. Games are already written in 3D. We call it volumetric 3D. So we have the X, Y, and Z coordinates. However, there isn't a left and right camera view to pass on to a 3D display. What a stereoscopic 3D driver does is while a game is being played, it captures the DirectX API information, or the 3D information, and creates a left and right camera view. It estimates literally what a left and right camera view should be positioned, or how it should be positioned, and passes on this new stereoscopic 3D information on, onto the 3D display, and the gamer has a full 3D experience. So in December of 1998, this is almost easily about 12 years ago, Metabyte announced Wicked 3D. And this was the first stereoscopic 3D and shutter glasses combination for PC. Even back in the day, in 1998, with their first announcement, 160 game titles were compatible with the technology. Now, the next step would have in, involved NVIDIA. This is how NVIDIA came into the playing field. You know, they, obviously, NVIDIA is a huge pioneer industry-wide, especially in, in, in the graphics industry. And they, this was an opportunity that they, they couldn't let pass by. So what they did was they acquired Metabyte's assets, in particular the stereoscopic 3D technology, and they brought the, the uh, Metabyte stereo team, including David Cook, to NVIDIA. And what happened was in June of 2001, NVIDIA released their first stereoscopic 3D drivers. Now, uh, right from the beginning, NVIDIA very much was a pioneer in the industry. They supported everything and everyone. LCD shutter glasses, interlaced monitors, dual projectors, stereo mirrors, NeuroArc optics, which we now know as IC3D. Sharp even had a solution that NVIDIA was, was working with. Whenever a 3D solution would come to market, in, NVIDIA was there to, to back it up with the software support. It was really, I mean, this really was the heyday of stereoscopic 3D, or, or the first heyday of stereoscopic 3D technology. But there were some challenges. Um, granted, even though was, NVIDIA was very much backing the technology with, with their software, there were compatibility problems. The gaming industry was going through an accelerated enhancement curve with with new special effects, post-processing effects, HDR lighting, bloom, blur, you name it. And as these enhancements were happening, the 3D drivers were growing less and less compatible. There was a business problem. CRT monitors, which were once on every desk, those are these big honking monitors uh, you know, that took up a lot of desk space, were being replaced with office space friendly L LCD panels. The problem with LCD panels is they were not compatible with LCD shutter glasses. So the market was literally bleeding away. The means to actually display the 3D was, was, was literally being taken off the desk. So what NVIDIA did as a service to their customers is they did maintain software support for their stereo drivers, but the drivers were not coming out on a regular basis, whereas once they were coming out once a month or once every few weeks, it was you know, coming out once every couple months. So really, at the end of the day, based on the limitations of, of of the number of displays in the market and, and you know NVIDIA's limited support given the circumstances, stereoscopic 3D gaming just wasn't ready yet. So the next step was in 2006. 
IZ3D released their first 17-inch monitor. This was a dual-panel polarized solution. I won't go into the details exactly how it works, but what matters is it wasn't a CRT-based technology. It was two LCD panels sandwiched together, running 60 hertz per panel, and in this case, it was supported by NVIDIA stereo drivers under the Neurog Optics name. And this is where I come in. Um, we have to remember, in those days, this was back in, in 2006, everybody was frustrated. I mean, the customers really loved the 3D experience. They wanted more compatibility. Unfortunately, NVIDIA wasn't yet in a position to put out more 3D drivers on a regular basis. The manufacturers wanted the game developer relationship so that when games come out, their displays will be compatible. Otherwise, they're still stuck in the research and development in the business markets rather than in the consumer markets. And then the game developers, well, the game developers couldn't care less. I mean, let's face facts. The developers were, were making a lot of money. They were selling a lot of product. And whether or not stereoscopic 3D was on or off the table, it had no impact on them. So they had no vested interest. They had no motivation to really get involved in stereoscopic 3D technology, at least not yet. So what I did was I, I said, you know what? Look at all this energy. I mean, we've got all these customers who really love 3D. They want to see it go on, but unfortunately, it's not going anywhere just yet. What if we were to create an advocacy group to demonstrate the demand of stereoscopic 3D, to create benefits for game developers, to really create a catalyst for the industry? So I put this proposal out literally on the NVIDIA forums, because at the time, they were the most uh, popular forums on, on on the internet when it came to stereoscopic 3D. The response was very positive, and IZ3D actually became our first sponsor. And, they, and, and the arrangement was, and still is to this day, that MTBS would be 100% owned and operated by Neil Schneider Productions, Inc., and you know, we would work with whomever we wanted. So MTBS was founded in March of 2007. In June of 2007, stereoscopic 3D gaming really changed. Um, what happened was I was invited to, to do a presentation, to be a keynote presenter at the Mention 3 Expo in chalon sur sun which is uh, southern France. And during my keynote address, alongside IZ3D, we revealed the first DirectX 9 stereoscopic 3D drivers to fully support post-processing effects with equal support for NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards. So as before, maybe the, you know, maybe 20, 30 percent of the graphics card market was was 3D compatible. Now we were suddenly looking at two thirds of the market being compatible with the difference, you know, being the you know GPUs already on on motherboards, which was separate altogether. So this really was something else because gamers could suddenly play their games with all the eye candy turned on without having to turn settings off and so on. So this was a big deal. So um, the only caveat was the drivers were only compatible with IZ3D monitors. And their monitor launched in November of 2007. Now, DDD, also known as Dynamic Digital Depth, was founded in 1993. This is another player in the market. And they released their first stereoscopic 3D drivers called Tridef Visualize, excuse me, Tridef Visualizer DirectX 9 Driver 1.0 in September of 2007. Now, their, their, uh, their idea was they supported interlace as well as DL DLP checkerboard formats. DLP checkerboard is like uh, 3D HDTVs, like Samsung and Mitsubishi and so on. And similar to IZ3D, they also supported post-processing effects. So really, with each player coming on the market, the standard was getting higher and higher as to what the expectations should be in 3D gaming. Next week, we're going to talk about the most controversial year in stereoscopic 3D gaming. So I'll see you, see you next week.